Welcome to Marketing Mistakes and How to Avoid Them. Here's your host, Stacy Jones. Welcome to Marketing Mistakes and How to Avoid Them. I'm Stacy Jones, and I'm so happy to be here with you all today. And I want to give a very warm welcome to Michael Pazinski. Michael is the CMO of Buzzworthy Integrated Marketing, where they focus on the integrated marketing needs of privately owned businesses. Whether that be through website design, Google Ads, or SEO, they help their clients build a stronger online presence and have helped over 750 service-based businesses. Michael has also been recognized by the American Marketing Association for his work as a visionary marketer and is the best-selling author of The Rule of 26, where he shares insights on how to double a website's revenue for those service-centric businesses I mentioned. Today, Michael and I are gonna be chatting about ways that businesses and entrepreneurs can gain a better understanding of digital marketing and how they can increase their online presence in a way that is simpler and more profitable. We're going to learn what works from Michael's perspective, what should be avoided, and how some businesses just miss the mark. Michael, welcome, so happy to have you here today. Thank you, Stacy. That was an awesome intro. Before we dive in, I always like having our listeners learn a little bit more about our special guests. So can you share with us how you got to where you are today, where you have now written a best-selling book, which is congratulations, right? Thank you very much. Your digital marketing expertise has something to do with that, which I'm sure we'll dive into. And then you've also created, you know, a business platform where you and I were talking before the show about service centric versus service Mm -hmm. businesses, based businesses, but you've created an opportunity to help hundreds and hundreds of businesses better find their own, you know, perfection in this world of marketing so that they could grow. Um, So how'd you get here? (laughs) Oh, how long is this podcast? Uh, (laughs) You know how you fall into things? I I slowly in the matrix of falling uh, got into (laughs) where I'm at today. Um, I was actually an Air Force brat as a child and moved around a lot and and I got into sales and marketing in California, where I, I did most of my growing up and uh, worked for some very large corporations, um, ran up a couple of corporate ladders, found out that that wasn't for me, but I needed to get out of California and then kind of discover the rest of the world. So I became the third generation of my family to join the Air Force. During that, I got more exposure to the world and uh, also failed at becoming a famous rock star, which was actually my childhood dream. Um, so not getting there, um, I got out of the service and I started my own recording studio and that's how buzz biz started. That was my first public company. And, and within a year, I realized that uh, surviving off of starving musicians was a horrible business plan. And so I pivoted quickly into media production for small to medium sized businesses. And over the years, we uh, became a full creative agency. We're actually a multi seven figure creative agency, uh, big staff, big facility, the whole nine yards. Um, But I found myself getting pushed further and further away from the people I was trying to help where I I actually wanted to go. And so just a few years ago, I created Buzzworthy Integrated Marketing. And so now I have a media production house that still does that award-winning media production for people who need video and audio and graphics and all that other stuff. But really, I focus now on is the the digital marketing for service-centric businesses. So if somebody's selling um, themselves to uh, somebody else or their services, uh, people serving people. That's where my sweet spot is. That's where the most passion is from our business owners. And it's where I get the most um, rewards from their successes. Awesome. If anyone just heard a large snore, that was from my cocker spaniel who's at my foot. So just, you know, that was not Michael, nor was that me. <laughs> so that's a journey. A military <laughs> brat to aspiring rock star to you know digital guru. That's that's pretty much your your whole line that you've gone. There, yes. It actually okay. started on a farm. I was actually a farm kid before. There you go. School. Yeah, so it even it goes further back. <laughs> so with what you were doing, you know, we started off the conversation, and I realized in my intro, you know, we were adjusting a little bit on your bio of saying something that was service based versus service centric, and I missed a spot to update that's that. But that's okay no. because I want us to dive in. Like, what is the difference between a service based and a service centric business? So I have recently learned that service based businesses 
are usually the service base is like a home uh, uh, services. So mainly HVAC, heating, and plumbing as the main service based. Uh, some will uh, put in electric electricians, um, but that's about it right there. And so I was actually on an, another podcast and they were for service-based business. So I got all excited. I'm like, oh, cool. We got, we got people talking about people, serving people. So there's this whole sy- sy- uh, uh, synergy going on all of a sudden. And then this guy gets on and he's like, yeah, so these HVAC guys and blah, 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 blah. blah. And I'm like, okay, I, I, I've worked with a lot of heating and cooling companies. This is fine. We're, yeah, we can roll with this. And both of the hosts are, come from HVAC heating and plumbing. And I'm like, and so after the show, he's like, yeah, we use that a term in our industry. That's our industry. I'm like, I'm going to have to reword the subtitles of my book. <laughs> but I, I think that a lot of people listening who are entrepreneurs of service companies that are oriented, you know, whether they're lawyers, yeah. whether yep. they are consultants, whether whatever it might be, they think of themselves mm-hmm. as being service-based. Right. So that's an right. easy thing to like, like interesting. It's all yeah. about words today. 17 years and never heard it. And then all of a sudden that's how they're putting that. That's how they're marketing their industry now. So I'm like, okay, I can work, I can roll with that. But yes, uh, I don't, I don't think that we've missed anybody in that. But I I like to be uh point on with my wording. I, I mean, I've been working, I've been wordsmithing for a few decades now. And so service centric uh kind of gives it a little bit more uh focus and and anybody regardless if you're a service-based or a lawyer or a medical or anything like that, you're going to go, okay, service-centric. Okay. I'm, I'm that, I'm that. Oh, I got this. Boom. Yeah. Well, we get the same thing because like my agency, we do Hollywood branded does entertainment marketing partnerships and we do product placement. And for years I had people be like, Oh, so you can help me with product placement in the grocery store. I'm like, what are you even talking about? That's not a thing. Oh no. In their industry, that's a thing. So, it's called merchandising. Know, That's merchandising, though. No, isn't it's not it? product. Pl- to me, it's merchandising, but to them, it's product placement. I'm like, oh, no wonder my mother, literally 25 <laughs> years ago, when I said I was going to go into product placement, said, you know, why are you actually working at grocery stores putting products forward? And I thought she was just like off her rocker, but nope, nope. <laughs> she actually was more clued into some lingo than I was. There you go. Uh, wow. There you go. Product. I always think of product placement in movies. Like, you know, there's a, there's a can so of Coca-Cola. <laughs> Ding. Yep. And if there's a movie that has a grocery store, we do product placement in the grocery store. Oh, <laughs> so. very nice. Yeah. yeah. I guess you don't even think about that part. Yeah. yeah. That's funny. But so that brings us to words, like the importance of words. And a lot of things that you're doing are digital marketing. And so it's all going to be word-based because, you know, it's video, it's text, it's, you know, you are getting across the message Mm -hmm. of what your clients are looking to do. And so how do you approach, like, what is the first step? You go in and you're like, okay, we're going to create a mammoth website for you, put together a digital strategy. You're going to start doing some Facebook Facebook advertising, Instagram. We're going to overlay some banner ads. Let's start shooting. It's probably not it. And get some product placement in your ads. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> right now, right? Do some partnership marketing. No, no, it's, it's nothing like, well, there's big, when we were a creative agency and most, and this is the trap creative agencies get in is that they do, they want to go big, right? It's. That's what they want. And if they get a client that can come along on that ride with them, you know, you really do create these huge movements. Um, but for the most part, small to medium sized businesses, uh, especially service centric businesses, don't have the cash to lay out such an elaborate production, if you will. Um, and really large websites, you know, we'll, we'll, I'm going to work back to your, your, your question here. Large websites are only good if you have a lot to talk about. And for my lawyers, Unless they have a big um, uh, partnership where there's seven or eight lawyers that have uh, an individual uh, focus on for each one of them, then yeah, you you could start out with a large one. But normally websites for service-centric businesses start a little smaller. So where I start is in the authenticity because really marketing, regardless of where you're doing it, has to do with your competitive advantage. And if you can't differentiate yourself from your competitors, whether it be local, whether it be industrial within your industry or nationwide, it doesn't matter. I don't care how few of you are or how many are, you always have to make yourself other than a commodity. 
right? So if we use dentists, how many dentists do you know? I know a lot. I know I have a friend who does has an agency only works with dentists. That's how many dentists are out there. I'm like, good. If you, if that if you get enjoyment out of that, that's great. These dentists need it, right? But how do you make each one of those dentists very special? Yeah. You know, because if you don't find that competitive advantage, you never can connect with your perfect client. And that's where my my sweet spot is. Let's find where your most profitable and rewarding business comes from. Because I learned very early on, all money is not good money. And it is it is good to fire bad clients. I don't care how much you need to pay rent. Sometimes I, I remember losing clients that I thought I could not live without and realized that I should have fired them long before um, we parted ways. And so that really is where we start is what is your story? And then we can decide how we want to tell it, where we're going to tell it, and to whom we're going to tell it to. And so when we're dialing in to the fact that you are a best-selling author, rule of 26, right? Right. What are the rules that support that? Like, how, what is the approach that you need to actually do that keep in mind as you know, you're figuring this out of mm -hmm. who your perfect customer is, how to get rid of the crappy ones, and who you are actually as a business. So all of that, that we just, you know, me answering your last question yeah. was really talking to one of the rules. There are three objectives within the rule of 26. So let me start with what the rule of 26 is first, and then we can go from there. So the rule of 26 is a 15 second website marketing strategy. I found that a lot of creative agencies and ad agencies and digital agencies, agencies in general, like to spend a lot of time because they get paid by time creating strategies. Mm -hmm. And they're very strategy centric instead of objective centric. Object objectives feed results, strategies feed ideas, right? And within those, you have create tactics. So the rule 26 states that if you increase your unique traffic, your conversion rate and the average value per client you get from your website by 26% each, you get a compounded output of 100% more revenue or doubling the revenue from your website. And I created this because I wanted to show service centric businesses who usually tell me I don't get any business from my website. We are, we, we survive on word of mouth and referrals. I'm like, ouch. So you are That's just, yeah. You're, I go, I equate it to farming, right? So you farmed it, right? But a great farmer can lay an awesome crop and have a bad season with one flood, with one drought, with too many hot days, with harvesting, COVID. right? Or oh, COVID. Yeah. Whatever it is. Right. <laughs> so it's like, you're not, so you are now not in control of your destiny. You cannot scale at will. Websites allow you to do that. And so I needed to find a very easy and digestible way of showing business owners who don't need to learn marketing, but just understand how it can, how simple it can be to get there. And so that, that what we were talking about before feeds into that average value per client, average revenue per client. Because if you're serving your niche where you're getting the most profit and most rewards from serving your perfect client, you're, you're going to be able to charge more and you're going to be able to retain your clients longer. Right. And so that's, that's one of them. And in conversions, we look at the website. If do they have a, a, a website now, are they even tracking conversions? Right. A lot of people don't even know what they, what they're getting from their website, except for, well, I think we get a couple of emails every once in a while. No. How many people does it take to get somebody to reach out to you? That's a conversion rate. Right. And then once we understand that we can push traffic in and in that traffic, we need to make sure it's good traffic, not garbage traffic. We don't need to waste our time with bad leads because it's just going to bring your conversion rate down. It's going to burn your resources, time, energy, and money. And so that's where I kind of come in and make sure that all of those cylinders are hitting them all the same, uh, all in sinkers. And I know we can use tools like Google Analytics. If there's yes. no fee to, <laughs> so that anyone out there, all of our listeners, they can add Google Analytics to your website. If you haven't, yes. you should. Yes. Like step one. <laughs> but 
you know, even if you have Google Analytics, you could be like, oh my gosh, look at all these people who are coming to my website mm-hmm. and nothing's happening. Like they come and they bounce. And what's a bounce? Right. Oh, yeah, they're right. gone. Yeah. They're here. Yes. So how are you helping your clients understand what actually gets some sticking power and how to actually, you know, channel that marketing messaging to impact their brand? You asked a lot there. That is a huge question. I I thank you for that. So the first thing is when we we look at our analytics is that nine times out of 10, you haven't filtered your analytics down to actual human beings. Mm -hmm. There are these things called bots that come and crawl our websites every day, thousands of them a month. And they can add a couple thousand unique visitors to your site. And they can also add a lot of sessions and page views to your site. What these bots are doing is they're, aggregating information from your website for their search or whatever they're collecting data for so that when somebody's looking for things that your website talks about, you are going to be more opt to uh, show up in those searches, right? Well, you got to filter those out. In my book, I actually, we, we actually talk about it and I actually do that for people. It's, it, it's free. So it's like, if you don't understand how to create or uh, connect analytics and or even set up what your conversion is, because that's the second side of what you just said. Well, we don't know what the numbers are saying. The numbers are saying we're not converting. Well, did you even set up your conversions correctly? Did you identify what a valuable conversion is, right? What action on your website does a user take that you consider a a step into a profitable relationship with that user, right? So, the, between those two right there, just identifying good traffic and clean data and identifying the, what actually happens, uh, what, what actually needs to happen to be considered a conversion, then we can start looking at, well, why aren't people doing what we've identified if you're in fact not getting conversions, right? Mm-hmm. So that's so in that, that's you know a whole nother Pandora's box of why somebody's or why your visitors are not uh, converting. But um you know, if you gave me an example, we could probably you know, go into it. But I mean, there's so many reasons why people don't. But the biggest reason I would probably say is that you try to say too much, too fast, or you ask too many times too soon. So you have a website that comes up and it says, hey, we are um, an orthopedic physician center. Call for an appointment. Why? Why would I call you? Yeah, I need I need an ortho. I get that. But I'm looking for the one who's going to make my knee better. And I need to understand why you are that person or your team is that team that I'm going to trust my mobility with, right? So asking too soon, and then you have the other way where people will rant on and on and on and on and on about themselves and then never ask for a call to action, right? And there's two things wrong with that. One, you didn't give them an endpoint to where you tell them what you want them to do next, right? And two, you talked about yourself. Yeah. The fastest way to drive people away from your website is continue to talk about yourself. Those are the two big ones. You mean, so what you're trying to say here is that when someone comes to your website, that they care not about themselves and the end result. They only care about whatever you're trying to like shove down their throat. They're not looking for solutions. They're not looking for ideas. Right. Exactly. I mean, people are selfish. The the reason that they're searching is because they have an issue or they have a desire. So they're defining out whether you are going to solve their problem or uh, deliver what they desire. Right. And so if you make it about them and you can see it right on my website, I I practice what I preach, right? The first thing I talk about is that most businesses are frustrated that they can't get a predictable revenue from their website. And we have a process of creating that predictable website for them. And the next thing we talk about is how we can help you. And right across the top is a needs-based menu. I need help with a website. I need help with search engine optimization. I need help with social media. I need help with reputation management. All of the tactics that go into the rule of 26 and in doubling our revenue. But make it about them. Yeah. (laughs) Always. You, you, you. Talk to them. Like have a conversation over it. You have a salesperson that's called a website that works 24-7, 365, never takes vacation, doesn't ask for a raise, and doesn't take sick days. 
Like you now, and you get to program exactly what it says every single time. Why aren't you taking advantage of that? Well, I think a lot of the reasons why people are not taking advantage of that is an error that they have where they think that giving away information and insights for free are then just going to enable that person who's coming to visit them to just do it all by themselves. And the rough thing here is, is they're always going to do it by themselves if they never had an intention to purchase from you. So why don't you establish (laughs) credibility and expertise by showing what you got? And getting people to be comfortable and confident that when they bring to you their royal mess of whatever they have, right. that <laughs> you are that provider, that service professional who's going to get them unwound from it and set up correctly. Right. And that, and that misnotion, that notion, sorry, that notion has been disproven time and time again. And I'll use house as a great example. House and Pinterest is another one where you can find out how to do all of the cool crafts or all the cool upgrades to your house and remodeling and all these things, right? And then why is it that they list like the professionals who did the design or professionals who can install the cabinets that you love and the professionals who do this and do that? Because when you, most DIYers get about halfway through, realize that they're way over their head and now they got to get professional help. Right. So even if somebody came in as a DIYer, which is not your perfect client, so you don't want them to reach out to you because they're going to be a waste of your time. Do not try to convince somebody who they are not. Right. If you're not a buyer, don't try to convince them that they're a buyer. Go to somebody who actually wants your help. Right. And you do that by offering up a lot of free information. Right. Me, I have my book. My book is the information that gets you in the door. Do I ask for a little bit of money for it? Yeah. Because I want to, my perfect client is willing to invest because to be successful in marketing does take investment. It's your investment. It's your business. You're going to get the lion's share of our work, right? And there are other professions that are like that. Um, you're probably one of them, right? So, you know, you, you want to get any of the DIYers out of the way with all the simple stuff. And even if they, and and if they can get to a certain point and then they're like, okay, now I'm at a point where it makes sense to, to hire that professional. Let's do that. Well, the little thing I did, because, you know, all of us who own businesses, we're our own worst enemies. I mean, we're good. We're good at sabotaging ourselves and we all like helping other people. Typically that's why we're doing what we do and we get a charge from it. We're all lit up and we're like, woohoo, I'm done. I'm up and I'm I got a plan and it really sucks when someone doesn't want that rescue and they don't want that plan. Right. And so then you sound yourself like trying to give it away for free. Cause you know, you've mm-hmm. got the idea, you got it for free. What if I just <laughs> give a little bit more for free? What if I get this? Mm-hmm. And what we ended up doing, because I was very good at sabotaging myself, <laughs> still catch myself is we created an online learning platform that people could subscribe to. And there's free mm-hmm. content as well as, I mean, we have over 1500 blogs that people can get to for nice. free, but we organized nice. it so that there was literally how to do what we do. So that if you wanted to have a class and get certified and be your own DIYer and you're a small Mm -hmm. company and you can't afford Mm -hmm. our services, great, more power to you. We'll be here when you have managed to get to be really big and need the big guns to come in to help you. And so, you know, I challenge our listeners to come up with ways to protect yourself, to look to see where you're giving away the farm, not Mm -hmm. the farm that Michael grew up on, the other farm, (laughs) and that you can actually come up with even alternative ways to make money potentially from this, whether it's through coaching or classes or doing Mm -hmm. that thing that gives you that little like inspiration of, oh, I am helping the world, but you're not sabotaging your business and your employees at the same time. If you think about it, like look at big, big, multi eight figure coaches out there, like Russell Brunson and his Click uh, Click Funnels, right? I don't, I don't know if you guys are familiar with that, but basically, he and a couple of friends he started out selling the instructions to potato guns. Back, okay, and this is a, uh, a wrestler in potato in guns college. need instructions. Yes, yes. Before you, you don't just load out, right? a potato in the gun and pull the trigger. Yes. And right. have it shoot out and explode. No. Right. And this is back in the day of DVDs where he would send a DVD to your house to sh- so you could put it in your, your DVD player and blah, blah, blah. Right. So he's, he's come full circle. Now he has a platform where you can build these sales funnels on his platform. Right. And, but he has a set of books, says three books that basically tells 
you what he teaches in his 20,000 a person masterminds. Okay. Because there is a certain level your perfect client needs to be anyway. So if you came in as a DIYer, so you listen to uh, Russell Brunson talk and you're like, wow, I want that. Okay, we'll have books back here. You start reading the books. You're like, this is way over my head. I need more help. You can immediately, you're self um, referring yourself, right? You're self qualifying as a done for you. You keep reading the book because, well, no, actually, I think I got this. I got, I'm, I'm good. I'm going to keep moving here. I'm going to start doing some of these things. And that's great. You're a DIYer, right? But then there's that, t- that point where it's like, man, I've gotten through the books, I've made some progress. I still need a little bit of help. And now he has programs that they can slot into there. So every coach out there has a way of creating that. We do it for ourselves. So our DIYers can plug into the programs we use with our DFY clients and use the same tools to get results on their own at at a fraction of the price because they're trading their time for it. But our our people who are doing DFY, they're the people who have more time money than time. They're trying to buy their time back. And they also know that the experts doing it are going to do it faster. They're probably going to do it better. (laughs) And they're going to come up with stuff that they never thought of. Right. And every one of these coaches that you're talking about has the same opportunity for their audience. Yeah. And it's like, you know, using me as an example, and this is a little different because it's not your, it's probably more your professional service versus your (laughs) essentially. But like right. handyman, right? Like we need right. to build new bookshelves and cabinetry in our house. There you and go. I went on a deep dive of looking at different companies or individuals or just having to understand how is this cabinetry going to be built? I do not want to build this. It'd be a disaster. <laughs> I could do it, but it will be a disaster. Right. I can do anything. It will be a disaster. But, you know, seeing the diagram, seeing how something's put together gave me reassurance that at least when I start having a conversation, I don't feel like a horse's ass. And then I actually am, you know, able to sound somewhat intelligent and know what to be looking out for that just doesn't seem right based on, you know, my short time of diving in. And that's what really people are looking for from these business websites. I think you, you hit it uh, spot on. I think that's a great point. Um, just to understand some of the lingo. So when people are pitching you their services, you kind of understand what they're talking about. Because if you don't understand what you're buying, you should never buy it, right? <laughs> and uh, and as service providers, that's our job too, is to break it down to the lowest common denominator and, and have that empathy that maybe not everybody understands everything the way you do. I see it on websites all the time, especially medical they talk way over people's heads. It's like, you have to be at a fourth or fifth grade level. Okay. Fourth and fifth graders don't know anything about biology yet, people. So if you're selling medical services, talk English to them. They do not want to hear any Latin unless it's already there in the, in the plain sight for everybody to see. Right. And uh, so, yeah, making people uh, feel smarter after they read your stuff can serve you just as well. So, Michael, how can our listeners find you? How can they buy your book? How can they dial in and be like, I need a little polish on my website? (laughs) Sure. I make it really simple. I I put everything in one website. It's called buzzworthy.biz. That's B-U-Z-Z-W-O-R-T-H-Y dot B-I-Z. At the top, you will find my book. It is available on Amazon ebook and paperback. For your audience, I am offering to... Uh, anybody who is will, is willing to uh, purchase the ebook, if you email me at buzz at buzzworthy, that's buzz with two Z's, uh, buzz at buzzworthy, um, a snapshot of your purchase, I will mail you a signed copy of my book absolutely free. That's a really nice offer because we were just talking about it beforehand. And sometimes having a tangible thing that you can dog ear and circle and highlight is nicer yes. than just trying to read something on your cell phone. But I mean, who wants to mark up such a pretty cover? I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Yes, everything's there. Um, and if you have any questions uh, about anything we talked about, I've given you my email. That is my direct email. I answer the, every single one of those myself. That's fantastic. So what is the next step that your book reveals? You said that, you know, there's three basic foundations, so mm-hmm. we don't have to go through all of them. So we can leave people learning, waiting, learning a little bit more. <laughs> 
But what else is really important to keep in mind? So um, one of the things that I, I point out in the book is that digital marketing does not uh, is not successful in the void on its own. Okay, it does not perform in a vacuum. Okay, um, a lot of people try to rely wholly on and put all their eggs in that basket. And in business, we know don't put all your eggs in one basket. <laughs> Solopreneurs suffer that the worst because they are the egg in their own basket, right? <laughs> right. And so one of the stories I talk about is guerrilla marketing. Um, and when I was just starting out, I actually grabbed about 500 tri-sided BIC uh, ballpoint pens. And on one side, I put my logo, uh, my, my business name and logo. On one side, I put my slogan. Back then it was be seen, be heard. And then on the other side, I put my website and people are like, why didn't you put your phone number on there? I was like, because I'm going to leave these everywhere that people don't know who I am. And they're like, what are you talking about? Why are they like, going to well, call you? Yeah. And then why are you going to call? Well, and the barrier, like when you call somebody, you usually have a purpose, right? And it's like, what are you going to call somebody and go? So I got your pen here and um, I don't know what, uh, so what do you do? Like, you're not doing that. Yeah. There's nobody, but they'll go to a website and, and stalk you, cyber stalk yeah. you. And that's great. That's what you want. And it took me about. 16 to 18 months later, I was, I was handing them, anybody needed a pen, I would, I would let them keep it after they used it. I signed bills at restaurants, or if I was uh, filling out a form at a medical place, wherever I could use a pen, I always leave, left it behind. Mm -hmm. And in, a, in about 16, 18 months, I started seeing my pen in places I'd never been before. It traveled. That's circular. It's like yes, it's it did. No. And it was, it was. And the great thing is, is like, well, be seen, be heard. I don't know what that means. And then they go and they, they look it up and, and whoever, and I actually had some people come in with their pen. They're like, so I just want you to know this worked. And they try to give me back my pen. <laughs> I was like, at that time, I actually had some fancy, fancy pens for my high-end clients. And I actually said, well, thank you. And I handed them a really nice pen and they're like, oh crap. They're never throwing that away. <laughs> Well, that's a cool way of taking something digital and bringing it into the real world. Right. And there's plenty of ways. There's thousands of ways of doing that. Um, and in really, and one of the pieces I put in my book, as far as traffic is your biggest ally, right? A conversion rate is great to fine tune the traffic that you're bringing in. You got to get there first. They got to get there first. <laughs> so everything you do, I, I brought on a new uh, CPA uh, accountant, um, a CPA uh, who does fractional CMO services or CFO services. I'm sorry. Uh, fractional services out of uh, Chicago. Right. And he's like, I'm brand new. I used to be in a firm. We used to do dot, 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 dot. And then he's like, okay, I need to get this website and start selling. I was like, so what are you doing besides digital marketing? And he's like, uh, no, I don't have anything. I was like, well, we need to, well, it's COVID it's Chicago. We're, we're, we're locked down. I said, there's thing called LinkedIn can literally get on a sales navigator for $89 a month and identify your perfect client and then reach out to them, reach out to a hundred of them a week and try to get those conversations, follow them, comment with them, network with them like the good old days. Be social. Right. And be social. And I almost use a, a bad word there. The, uh, but yes, be social, use it as it is intended and create those relationships. He forgot that that's how we met. I reached out to him at one point on LinkedIn yeah. and we got a conversation going and he started listening and he started looking at my, my LinkedIn profile and he started watching some of my videos and, and, and read a couple of my articles and dot, dot, dot. And then all of a sudden he's like, I think I'm with the wrong he calls me or he messages me and he, and he says, Hey, listen, you know what? I think I'm with a digital marketing firm that's not doing anything you're talking about. And I can feel it because I got zero sales after five months. I'm like, yeah, we probably should talk some more then. <laughs> and so that's where, you know, right now, because of COVID, we, we are pulled toward the digital, but if you can find ways to be human about it and not bots and automation and all these other gimmicks out there, you're going to do so much better in the long run. And so, Michael, any last words, parting advice to our listeners that you hope they'll take home and take to heart? I think that the one thing that we discussed today that people just can never hear enough of is authenticity. If you are selling a service that you and or your team is providing, you have the unique opportunity of being human. 
And to be human is to be unique. And so if you can be authentic into why you're unique, you're going to do yourself and your potential clients a huge service in telling that story. Don't try to be anything anybody else wants you to be and always be true to yourself. Because when you do that in your marketing, you will always win. Good thing to remember. And so for all of our listeners, thank you for tuning in today. Michael, thank you so much as well. Thank you, Stacy. And for everyone, I look forward to chatting with you on a future episode of Marketing Mistakes and how to avoid them. And since we talked about it today, if you do have interest in product placement, celebrity, and influencers, anything along those lines, we have a chock load of classes at learn.hollywoodbranded.com, like a ton, free go. classes, paid classes. So certainly go over there. You can check out my attempt to protect me from those who are still in the DIY world. Um, <laughs> and Michael, I really do think that, you know, you shed on a lot of light on how people need to switch their perspectives and reapproach their service centric um, businesses to make sure that it's not about me and it's more about how I can help you. Well, I'm glad to have served. Thank you so much again. 